Hello everyone and welcome back to a Polestar driver video. Today we're going to look at the trips submitted for March and how that has affected the overall numbers across all of the submissions that we've had. So let's get going. First page has a summary page where you can see we've got um, submissions from eight countries, 63 different contributors who have filled in their name plus a number of people who have submitted data with no name and in total we have 283 trips which is covering just over 19,000 miles or 30,600 kilometers. What a great set of data and thanks to every one of you that have submitted data. Here we see our progress chart as you can see in February when we introduced you to the Postal Driver Trip Submission System, uh, we received 85 entries or trips in February. And in March, we've bumped that up to 159 entries in one month. So great work by you. And you can see there we now have a total of 283 entries in the database. He has a list of all the people who contributed and filled in their name. This next page shows us the top contributors of all time. So since I started collecting data back in September, uh, I can't fit all the names onto one page. So this is the top 16 or 18 names uh, by trips and distance. Those, the following names contributed to our 159 entries in March alone and top of the list is Polestar Warrior with 39 trips and 1,304 miles. Let's look at consumption. So this is consum consumption of all the data and in February we had 40.2 kilowatt hours per 100 miles and you can see there in March this has come down to 33.9 kilowatt hours per 100 miles. The small number you see underneath uh, the, in the blue square is the number of submissions for that month. Uh, in kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, it's come down from 25 in February to 21 in March. Across all of the entries in the system, uh, the average here for miles is 36 kilowatt hours per 100 miles or 23 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Next we look at range. So here you can see uh, that in February our average range was 195 miles based on 75 kilowatt hour usable battery. And in March, that has increased to 229. In kilometers, it's gone from 313 in February to 370 in March. Top right is the average across all the entries. So uh, across 283 entries, we have an average range of 215 miles or 346 kilometers. And the difference between PDRW and the quoted WLTP range is 26.4% currently. This next page we look at uh, the same range but it's converted to miles per kilowatt hour or kilometers per kilowatt hour. And you can see the same trend as the previous one. Uh, in February we were 2.6 miles per kilowatt hour and March has gone up to 3.0 and will ho hopefully continue climbing. In February it was 4.2 kilometers per kilowatt hour and in March it's up to 4.9. This page here is the same range uh, calculated in kilowatt from the kilowatt hours and on the right hand side you can see uh, the names with the most calculated range at the top and going down. So at the top currently is Dave BE with three trips logged 145 miles equivalent 
and uh, current range of 267 miles or 433 kilometers. So well done Dave, you're top of the list at the moment. The next page shows us the range by country. So you can see top one is, uh, is GB for the blue line and uh, US have not sent any submissions in March it looks like. Uh, so their line has not started moving yet. Down the bottom is all those countries that submit in kilometers and um, there you can see the charts are starting to rise. This page here shows you just some more country level de information. So if you want to see for your country what are the average distance uh, per trip, average temperatures, kilowatt hours per hundreds or miles or kilometers per kilowatt hour and range. You can see here the average for your country. This next one shows us the temperature ranges. So um, different ranges, uh, less than 0, 1 to 10, 11 to 20, 21 to 30. And as you can see in March, we are going from 3.0 miles per kilowatt hour in the 1 to 10 range to 3.8 miles per kilowatt hour in the 21 to 30 range. And on the right hand side, you see the numbers for all entries. So 2.2 miles per kilowatt hour below zero degrees or 3.4 for above 21 degrees. The next page is the same information but in Fahrenheit. The next page shows preheating. So uh, in a couple of past videos we discussed preheating and how do we know when preheating is no longer required. And if you take a look at here for March, you can see these trips, there's 130 trips logged uh, with no preheating and the miles per kilowatt hour is standing at 3.1 and here are 28 trips with preheating on and the range is 3.0 and overall across all the entries you can see the total is 2.9 versus 2.8 this is the page that I call the preheating crossover so how do you know at what temperature you don't need to heat your car or heating your car will not give you any benefit and I've highlighted this uh, section here 10 degrees C or 50 Fahrenheit you can see there 24 trips have been logged with this temperature and the difference between no preheating and preheating is actually 0 0.01 mile per kilowatt hour up until 10 you can see the blue line which is no preheating is always giving you less range than the preheating but after 10 you can see the switch where preheating no preheating is getting a better range than preheating now this could be uh, due to the fact that there are just less trips where preheating was used so you see here there's only one trip log with preheating and 16 trips logged with no preheating. Just remember 10 degrees seems to be the magic number at the moment and we'll keep monitoring this across all the months and see if it changes. This next page just gives you a breakdown of what miles per kilowatt hour you can expect at different temperature ranges. Next page is wheel size. So here we can see there's 266 entries logged uh, that entered the wheel size uh, which covers 16,294 miles in total. And in March, what can we see? So in March we are seeing that the 19 inch standard wheels are getting an average of 3.1 miles per kilowatt hour. And in 20 inch, is on 2.4 and 21 inch is on 3.1 so 
that's actually similar to the 19 inch um, but across the whole uh, range of data 266 entries you can see here on the bottom right the average for the 19 inch is 2.9 then 2.4 for the 20 inch and 2.6 for the performance uh, version next one is one pedal driving so across all of the entries logged 272 with this information available you can see in march one pedal driving down here has got 60 trips logged with an average of 3.1 miles per kilowatt hour then you have low setting for one pedal driving 20 trips at 3.0 and 78 trips for standard one pedal driving at 2.98 on the right hand side you can see the total across all the months 2.9 2.9 and 2.8 it looks like one pedal driving does not make much of a difference to the uh, efficiency of the car it's really a matter of preference about which option you choose road conditions as we expect um, dry conditions is coming out better than wet conditions and in march we can see here dry conditions 108 trips at 3.2 here we have 30 trips at 3.0 and here we have 19 trips at 2.51 so no surprises here across all of the entries we're going 3.0 2.8 and 2.5 driving style so this one is uh, very subjective uh, it when you fill in the data you can choose what driving style you used be it eco normal or sporty and in March you can see as expected eco drivers are scoring 3.4 miles per kilowatt hour normal drivers 3.0 and 2.1 for sporty drivers one interesting thing i noted here is that one person uh, who logged their data in miles must have had a fun day out and scored 1.1 for a single trip that they did next one is speed so uh, as we uh, these speed the average speeds are broken down into bands so less than 30 miles per hour 30 to 50 or 50 to 70 and in March you can see less than 30 we have 37 trips logged at 3.1 for 30 to 50 mile per hour average we have 104 trips logged um, with an average of 3.11 and for 50 to 70 mile per hour average we have 18 trips logged with a mile per kilowatt hour of 2.69 across all of the entries you can see 2.8 2.9 and 2.7 it doesn't seem that any of these speeds are showing much of a, a difference when it comes to efficiency next one we look at is distance ranges so, so in march again we can see obviously short trips less than 15 miles are coming out as 2.8 and we know that those are the most inefficient trips to do in the Polestar 2 uh, then we're getting up to 3.1 um, up to 125 miles and then 126 to 200 it drops to 2.7 and more than 200 miles it drops to 2.9 is basically telling us that the most efficient journey is between 15 miles and 125 miles bottom right you can see the totals across all the data that's it for the March numbers I want to say again thank you to everyone who has submitted data how do you fare against these numbers let us know in the comments below don't forget to like subscribe and click on the notification bell and leave a comment always glad to interact with you hear your experiences and see if we can share any information thanks for watching and i'll see you again soon